Hello, this is a video on the derivative of a determinant, determinant with respect to a matrix, um, not, of, not a variable x, the whole matrix. And this comes into play when you're trying to find the maximum likelihood estimate for a multivariate normal distribution. Okay, um, And so this is going to be one of several videos leading up to that, finding the uh, maximum likelihood estimator for multivariate normal. Um, it's six pages. I usually try to keep it to four or less, but this is important stuff. And if you're here, you're probably interested in, in knowing about this. Um, I give several examples, and I also give a proof at the end of the video. So first of all, we have to establish uh, nomenclature and notation. And so here's derivatives with vectors. So here is a uh, vector by a scalar. So y is a vector and we're taking it a derivative with respect to x. So this uh, this is a column vector and I must admit one of the reasons I'm, I'm going through this notation is there's not a hundred percent accepted way to represent this stuff. I think that I'm given the most common representation but different fields do different things and that's why I'm presenting it. So here you just, it, it, it's component wise that you just take the partial with the first component, the second, the third, and the nth component. The uh, scalar by a vector, um, so here x is a vector in, in, of size n and y is a scalar. So to take the partial with respect to this x vector, then even though x is a column, the result ends up as a row. And so then you just take the partial of y with respect to x1, x2, xn. Now think gradient in, ca in vector calculus. This is what this represents. So vector by vector. Um, and again, think Jacobian because this is exactly what it is. So we have uh, two vectors, y and um, x. And they're both column vectors. So what I find interesting, oh, these are ones. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking through a, like a little two inch video screen. Um, so what you do is, is th this is a vector. So you, so Y stays in column form. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, you know, all the way up to M. And this vector ends up like when it was, uh, you know, scalar by vector, it ends up going, um, you know, row. So then it's, it's partial Y1 respect to X1, partial Y1 respect to X2, partial Y1 with respect to Xn, and so forth. And again, this is the Jacobian. So derivatives with matrices, First of all, we'll do a matrix by scalar. So the matrix is an M by N matrix and we're taking the uh, derivative with respect to X, which is a scalar. So then, and here you just do it component wise. You, you leave, you know, Y, it's the partial of Y11 with respect to X. So that's the first row, first column. And this is the first row, second column. And you take the partial. So it's component wise and then this one, and this is the this is the one we're going to expand upon. That is, we're going to take the derivative of a scalar by a matrix. So let x be an m by n matrix. So here, the y um, is of course it's a scalar, so it's always in the numerator, the partial of y, partial of y, partial of y. But this next part is a little tricky since this is a matrix. The first, if we were only going to do the first column of this matrix, then we would get this. But, and then, and so we have to do something similar. So the second column of this matrix goes here, and the third and the fourth. And so even though these are columns, they get kind of mapped to rows here. Um, so this is the partial of y with respect to x11 partial y with respect to x21 remember we're going down this column partial y with respect to m1 
and then we just repeat. Okay, so now I have to go over two things, the determinant and the inverse matrix for background of the proof so it makes more sense. And so if X is a matrix, uh, it has to be a square matrix if we're taking the determinant of it. Um, the determinant of this can be expanded using the Laplace expansion. Sometimes it's called the cofactor expansion. So what you do is you pick a, you know, a row, I mean a row or a column, and then you traverse down it. So that's what this represents. But then you take it times the cofactor. So if we go down, that means we take um, this element times the derivative of this. We get rid of the whole row and column. So then we go down here and make it a minus and then take the derivative. You know, we get rid of the second row and first column and it's the derivative of everything else. And we go down. That's what this represents. So this capital A is called the, it's called a cofactor. And now over here, we have what's called the um, adjunct matrix. Uh, sometimes called the classical adjoint matrix, um, and 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 sometimes just the adjoint matrix. But some people get uh, they don't like just calling it the adjoint matrix. So by I, so for this video, we'll just call it the adjunct uh, matrix. And basically, it's the transpose of the the uh, matrix of cofactors. So this A one one is. When, when we go when we say we go down this column and then we take the derivative of this that's what this represents and then when we go let's say we go across the row then we take out the first row and the second column and then it's the derivative of whatever's left over so it's minus the derivative that's this and you go across and the uh, uh, adjunct matrix is actually the um, transpose of this so the adjunct is just the transpose anyway so the, so that's background and I had to to go over this to I think to make it explicit um, some people write this a sharp or a octothorpe or whatever you want to call it and some people write uh, a DJ of X for the adjunct matrix and I think I tend to use this more so now for the uh, the inverse of a matrix, so a matrix X and its inverse is such that you get I, and of course you multiply it the other way, you get I. But the point that I want to point or to, to point out here is that the inverse matrix is actually the uh, you know the determinant you know into the inverse. So it means take divide it by this times the uh, adjunct matrix which can be represented like this. And so this is gonna be part of our solution. So just knowing that this is the case, and you'll have to research that on your own. So the main result, um, we're gonna assume that X is a positive definite, or matrix is. So the derivative of the determinant with respect to this matrix is just the adjunct matrix. But it can be written as this, the determinant times the inverse. Right, so if we take this, uh, you know, the inverse is this, and so if we take it times the derivative, those cancel, leaving just the adjunct matrix. So let's look at some examples, and then we'll quickly get into the proof. So when n is one, so it's a one by one matrix, so x is just x one one. The derivative is x one one. The adjunct matrix is one. And notice that the derivative of this with respect to the matrix, and there's only one, so it's x11. The derivative of this with respect to x11 is just one. And so those two agree. So for two, we have a, a matrix here, two by two, and the adjunct matrix, remember, so if we take, if let's say we you know go across one row or not, if we take, if we look at this first element, and cross out the, the what's left, and then to take the determinant of it, that's this, okay? So this one here, if we, and since it's two by two, the determinant's really easy. So we cancel out these two and take the determinant of what's left. So it's x11. 
Oh, but it's minus. You have to go minus that. Plus, minus, and that's what's here. So remember, this is the transpose of the cofactor matrix. And then if we look at this one, and then cancel out row one, column one, the determinant is this. So it's my, oh, plus, minus, plus, and so it's minus to that. And then here, you cancel everything out and you get X11. So this is the adjunct matrix. Um, now the determinant of this, of course, is just this product minus that. So now let's take the de find the determinant. So this one is the determinant of this with respect to X11, and you just get X2. Then this one, and you go down the column, so this one is the determinant of this, I mean the derivative of this with respect to X21. So it's going to be minus 1, 2, which is this. And then the derivative with respect to 1, 2 is uh, you get minus 2, 1, which is this. And then th this one is the derivative with respect to X22. Two, two which you just get x1. And so this is this is the derivative. And notice that it, it's equal to the adjunct matrix. Okay? So that's how you, you do this, but um, you know in 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 practice you're not going to do it the long way. You're just going to use this result. Alright, so now let's go let's do a little proof. So let's let y be the determinant of this matrix x. So a little background first is, remember, we can take the determinant of this by the Laplace uh, expansion, or, you know, you go down a row and then you cancel out the row and the column that you're at and you take the derivative of, you know, what's left and, you know, then it's either a plus or minus depending upon where you are in that row. Um, and so that's this. So this is the Laplace expansion where this is the cofactor. But remember that the adjunct matrix is the transpose of this cofactor matrix. So really the adjunct matrix, so this says, you know, if, we, if we're going across row one, that's what this represents, row one and then, and then one through n, it, this is the transpose, so it's J1 as opposed to 1J. It's the transpose of that, okay? But we could have picked row two and expanded across it, or we could have picked row three or row four or row n, it, and we'd, we'd get the same determinant. All these are equal to that. And I think that is pretty common knowledge, but we're going to make use of that. Um, so now, notationally, this is what we need to find, the uh, partial of y with respect to x. And then notationally, this is it. So the y, of course, is in the numerator in each of these. And then... You know, this is the first column of the matrix. This is the second column. This is the nth column. And so um, we're going to write this in a, in a special way. And as long as y represents the, the determinant of x, it, it, it's okay. It's the same. And we can actually use any of these representations. And we are. We're going to do it in a very unique way. So for the first row of this matrix, so this matrix that I'm getting ready to show you is actually this matrix, but I'm going to replace Y with one of these formulas. So here, so the denominators are the same as the previous matrix, but for Y, I'm going to expand it across row one here. And then I'm, for this one, I'm going to expand it across row two and then row N. And I'm going to do that the same. This is expanded across row 1, row 2, row 3, row 1, row n. And all of these is, is y. That's the determinant of, of x. So the reason we do this, now here, since we're expanding this across row 1, there's only one time where this is equal to this in this sum. So it goes from 1 to n. And so when it's x11, well, then we have to pay attention to it. But if it's not, so let's say it's x12, well, that's not it. But how do we, what about this? There may be an x1 in it. But we, since we've expanded it across row one, all of these adjunct 
matrix, you know, the, the, all of these, we delete all of row one and then the respective column that we're at to calculate this. So there's no X11 in these. So when you take the partial of this with respect to X11, there's only one, it's X11, and you take the derivative of that, it's just this, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna flash down a second. So the first derivative of, of this component is just that. Now this one here is the same way. So we're expanding across the second row. And then the adjunct, you know, these are calculated by getting rid of the second row and then getting rid of whatever column we're on. So there's, in this adjunct matrix, there's never X21 in here because we delete the second row every time. And so there's only one variable, one time that this equals X21 that we have to worry about, and that's when it's one. So then <coughs> the partial of X21 with respect to X21 is just this constant here. And it's constant in regards to X21. Ooh, big message. So we get this. And actually, and then we do the same. We expanded it across row one. So these never have row one variables in them. So then there's only one time that this equals this. Otherwise, they're constant and the partial zero. And that's when it is um, one in. So now we do that for each of these. And each of these cases, this, does, this will never involve X11 because we remove the first row each time. And so there's only one time that we can take the derivative. And the same way I'm in the instance of time, I'm gonna skip, but that's the case for all of these. So we end up with this uh, matrix here that um, is, is just the components of the adjunct matrix. So as a whole, it is the adjunct matrix. Well, since it's the adjunct matrix, we can multiply it by one, the derivative of X, and then this right here is the inverse matrix of X times the derivative. And that's it. And so that's the proof of the derivative of the determinant with respect to the matrix X. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. This is going to be the first video in my buildup to finding the maximum likelihood estimator for the multivariate normal distribution. Thanks, bye.